Hello guys, and Google search for my country Ukraine is always very dramatic. These are typically phrases like Ukraine war now, Ukraine map now, Ukraine map online. And since recently, there are a lot of searches about minerals in Ukraine. That's because of the mineral deal that Trump wanted so much and finally got it. And there were so many discussions, both outside Ukraine, inside Ukraine. Are we doing something wrong? Are we doing something right? Do we have these minerals? What minerals do we have? And so on and so forth. So I've decided to record this video for us because I've learned a lot myself when I collected the information for it. Because honestly, minerals were never in the center of my understanding of Ukraine. I'm typically focused on our people, which is definitely the greatest resource, if you can say like that about people, language, culture, ability to protect Europe and the world. But let's talk about those minerals. And actually, it returned me back to my school years because we have many subjects in Ukrainian schools, not like five, six. We do not unite geography, biology or mathematics and physics. These are all separate subjects, very often quite theoretically loaded, but uh, they provide a very wide outlook. So we had these geography lessons and one of the popular home tasks that a Ukrainian child can get is to draw on contour maps. They remind uh, those books uh, that children like to color, you know, um, there you can um, draw the borders of your regions. Uh, various zones, geographical, and also mark minerals. I did not like this kind of home task. I am not very good at this, like, very small uh, minerals identification, but it made me feel emotional again because I remember how many times I was drawing a map of Ukraine, I was drawing our 1991 borders, and I could not imagine that so many of us will die, will fight for the protection of these borders because of unprovoked and very evil Russian violence. So every of these tasks, every of these homeworks actually receives a totally different understanding when you go through an experience that we have right now in Ukraine. And that is also a reminder to you, good people, everything is possible until this evil is punished, until Russia learns a lesson that you cannot violate borders, you cannot violate international laws. But let's return to these minerals. And I have collected a lot of interesting facts and I was surprised to know myself that Ukraine occupies, like normal 1991 Ukraine, occupies 0.4% of the Earth's land area. And at the same time, we have 5% of all Earth's minerals, which is 10 times or more bigger than the area we possess. What is also interesting here in Ukraine, we have 20,000 different deposits of various minerals. And uh, I had to learn this rare earth minerals uh, details at the very beginning of Trump's presidency because everyone knows he is very greedy. He's just about money. He's just about deals. But as my country needs the continued support, at least intelligence sharing or not sharing intelligence with the Russians, perhaps we had to invent something to attract Trump's attention and minerals were the thing. But what Trump names as rare earth is probably just the minerals that Ukraine has. And out of 200 or something that the planet knows, Ukraine possesses 117. That is a lot. And out of these minerals, the majority are not rare earth metals or something like that. Actually, you don't need that many rare earth minerals, but there are a lot of minerals that modern industry 
needs and uh, if we want our economy to develop in this uh, ecologically friendly trajectory, efficient trajectory, if we want to get rid of this energetic dependency on authoritarian regimes, then we possess a lot of really interesting minerals and they are rare, but they are not rare earth minerals from that like classical geological point of view. Before the minerals deal, if you met me on the street and you would ask me, Anna, what are the typical minerals that you can uh, excavate in Ukraine? What is just like the most important ones? I would definitely say coal. And I know it's old school, but uh, specifically we have a very good kind of coal, like anthracite or something like that. It's very clean, very energy efficient. And then I would say iron and manganese ore, oil and gas, we have it, and uh, mineral waters and uh, salt. Salt is important. So you see nothing that special. I come from a region that has its specific uh, mineral resources because uh, my region is a forest part of Ukraine. We have a lot of swamps. So we have peat, and I hope I pronounce it properly, P-E-A-T, a lot of that. And it was a very popular way to heat the houses here. Of course, nowadays it's used in a different way, but I'm happy that now ecologically sober people finally realize that swamps are very important for the planet and they stopped drying them because during the Soviet era it was a tragedy and there were so many swampy territories that were uh, dried and right now we, we lack that. <clears throat> and we also have a lot of amber. Uh, the same type as in the Baltics. No, we don't have a sea or an ocean in my Volin region, but many, 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 many years ago we had here. And that's why we have the deposits of amber. And before the start of this war, it was a serious problem because a lot of people started digging it illegally it was very difficult to fix everything because it's deep in the woods it is deep in very difficult uh, territories that are difficult to reach and that was a serious problem right now because of the martial law because it's really close to the border of belarus fi finally that stopped but uh, it's a serious ecological problem for ukraine and uh, the majority of that amber was exported to guess where china China is perhaps one of the main reasons why Trump wants Ukrainian minerals, and he wants all, because China is the country that has most of them. And most of these air, uh, rare ass minerals are mined there. And in total, they have like 60% or something. Well, they are a big country, but compared to that to Russia, Russia cannot literally boast anything. Even their natural resources are quite predictable, oil and uh, gas. A very popular misconception that I often come across is that all of Ukrainian minerals, all of the important elements are close to the front line or already occupied by Russia. No, it's not true. Uh, because like the majority of these more rare minerals, they are in the center of Ukraine. There is a huge like territory like that. And if we talk about oil, gas, coal, it is um, also in the west part of Ukraine, not just in the east or southern part. Of course, there are many important deposits now close to the front lines or already occupied by Russia. There are rumors that the Chinese wants to uh, develop them, but also a lot of them are on the other territories of Ukraine. So it's not just like this part is uh, only in the east and Russia is fighting for the resources. No, Russia wants to destroy Ukraine as a democratic danger to their authoritarian rule. Russia needs us from this imperial colonial point of view. And I have a separate video on this channel already where I answer some of the reasons why Russia invaded Ukraine. And resources are not like on the top of the list. <clears throat> 
and actually i have like you know that's my habit that's how i write all of the videos actually um the first oil deposits industrial oil deposits were developed in ivano frankivsk region that is close to the Carpathian mountains and it was in 1771 that was the first industrial oil deposit in Europe. Of course, they used it for different reasons, like for medicine and also for uh, light in the houses. But then a city in Lviv region, Borislav, became the center of oil industry in the end of the 19th century. And a lot of people invested in that city and it was actually the center, the European center of oil industry. It did not last long because the deposits were not that big. Uh, the ones that are located sh sh shallow, like, I mean, really close to the surface, and it was not difficult to extract them. There are more, but they demand more development. It may be more expensive. So it is in the Carpathian Mountains too. In the center of Ukraine, we have rare earth minerals. Then in the south, in the east. So please do not think that like all the fighting takes place for the resources and it's not just it's just where the resources are. No, there are lots of coal mines, there are lots of gas and oil deposits in the Carpathian Mountains. And um, what is also interesting, uh, Forbes in 2023 decided to predict the potential price of um, the Ukrainian mineral resources and it estimated them as 15 trillion dollars. That's a lot. From what I know, Ukrainian researchers, they have lower figures, but we're talking about Trump, so we should say not 15 trillion, but 15 trillion trillions <laughs> or something like um, that. But uh, my country is definitely rich in many things. And I don't want resources, you know, like to outshine people of Ukraine, heroes of Ukraine. Uh, I don't know, culture, uh, bravery, resilience. But uh, now let's concentrate on those elements, on those minerals <clears throat> that can be considered rare. Once again, not rare earth, but like still not coal, not uh, salt, and salt is close to Bakhmut. Uh, salt is now like so many salt production sites are uh, destroyed. And that is uh, also a tragedy because many of us want to get that salt from uh, Ukrainian cities like Solidar that was destroyed. And, uh, you know, um, it's so bad that you want to get this ordinary salt that has an additional meaning and you cannot now. Most of salt that we have right now in Ukraine are from uh, Poland, from Spain, from some exotic countries. But let's return back to this rare, more rare elements. And here we have number one, lithium. Lithium is in fashion right now because we have it in our batteries, in our telephones. We need it for the production of various kinds of uh, batteries and taking into account that electric cars are becoming more and more widespread, there will be more and more need for lithium. We have it. And Elon Musk actually made it very popular when he said he wants to produce a lot of such batteries. And uh, uh, it seems to me many people now name lithium white oil or something like that. But it's good for what they say strategic, uh, strategic innovative economy. And I kind of support that. What is interesting, Ukraine has approximately one third of uh, uh, one third of Euro Europe's uh, deposits of lithium, and we also have a lot of titanium. It is a very modern, very necessary for the production uh, metal, and it is used in defense industry. We need that in aviation, in our laptops we have it, and even people need them for high quality prosthesis. Uh, and you know, that's a serious issue right now in Ukraine. 
and uh, that's good that Ukraine have uh, has lithium and actually we have the largest uh, the largest deposit in the world in Ukraine it's not yet developed and a very important fact that this mineral deal it was rewritten a hundred times and uh, the modern edition is really good and no one objected against it in Ukraine because according to our constitution all the resources they belong to people and this deal now includes the newly developed uh, deposits and uh, it is mainly focused on the investment of the results into Ukraine. Uh, we don't mind if uh, foreign companies will come and develop because this is the way it's always like that in your countries too. It's quite normal when, for example, an Australian company comes with an experience of doing that in different parts of the world and then develops it, sells it and pays part to Ukraine. Because previously, many of these deposits were used by Russian businessmen who had special connections with the presidents like Yanukovych who lobbied uh, the different laws in Ukraine and that is one of the reasons why they so desperately wanted to influence Ukrainian uh, politics to safeguard their businesses and uh, to get everything out of Ukraine. This is a very similar approach they use now with many republics inside the Russian Federation. You know, the Russian Federation does not equate to Russia. Uh, Russia is small and the Russian Federation has a lot of different nations now trapped under Kremlin that uses their resources, doesn't give them money back and uh, sells everything because Russia is that dig and sell economy, nothing else. So right now, um, they do not have access to their Russian businesses. They cannot operate in Ukraine, which is already a great victory. They are long ago sanctioned, but that is the way it was back in uh, the Soviet Union. The Kremlin, Moscow always used the resources of uh, the occupied countries naming them republics and that was the only reason for the wealth of you know moscow saint petersburg a very typical colonial behavior i was really glad to learn all of that i have found a great uh, video ukrainian video on the channel Realna Historia, Real History, where they collected a lot of videos, a lot of historical footage about uh, Ukrainian mineral resources. And that is why I love this channel, because it teaches me a lot so that I can share later with you. Let me know in the comments below, would you like a separate video about maybe Donetsk, Luhansk region, which they often call Donbass, and that is a Soviet construct. Maybe I need to explain to you something more about the region. It is rich in mineral resources. It was industrial and now it's a hot zone. And uh, also, I've told you about these Ukrainian schools. If you have some questions about the education in Ukraine, something that you would really want to know, let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe if you knew that's an honor when our community grows here too. Subscribe to my social media. Uh, you can find the links in the description of this video, same as a link to our merch shop. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and sponsors of the channel, but most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!